Omaha was a thriving city in the early 1900s. Inhabitants from around the country would pilgrimage to the growing city in the heart of America. In 1884, a man by the name of Carl Rosenfield bought land near the popular Lincoln Highway, which is now 79th and Cass Street, and opened a large garden that was filled with peony flowers. This garden covered 25 acres of land and quickly became an Omaha staple. The multicolored rows of peony bushes provided a scenic travel route through the countryside. The peony house where Carl Rosenfield resided still stands today. In 1919, business savvy Joe Malik Sr. and his two brothers saw a budding opportunity directly across the street from Carl Rosenfield's Peony Garden. The siblings started by building a gas station called Manhattan Gas and a restaurant called the Peony Inn, which catered to tourists who traveled to see the iconic flowers. As business picked up, Joe Malik Sr. began brainstorming ideas of new ways to bring in more customers. He decided to transform the Peony Inn into a ballroom, where music could be played and people could dance. He named this area the Royal Grove. After seven years of owning a thriving business, the Maliks realized that on their land is a natural spring-fed lake. The siblings decided to implement a state-of-the-art water filtration system using sand filters. Now instead of just traveling distances to enjoy the gardens, tourists also traveled to experience fun in the sun. And thus, Peony Park was born. Throughout the 1930s and 40s, the Royal Grove at Peony Park was nationally recognized for the big bands and performers it hosted. Some of these performers included Duke Ellington, Glenn Miller, and Omaha's very own Preston Love. In 1935, the Royal Grove was developed into an outdoor entertainment and picnic area. It had a stage that was modeled after the 1933 Chicago World's Fair stage. As the years went on, the Malik family continued to look for ways to further improve their business. In 1958, the first ride attractions were added to the park. The area known as Kitty Land was opened with rides originally put in place for children. A few years later, bigger rides were installed as major attractions. Upon entering the park, a few things visitors noticed were the giant ferris wheel and a sky rail that encircled around the pool. Peony Park had finally evolved into a full-on amusement park. Never spent a day quite like this In 1972, a state-of-the-art roller coaster called the Galaxy Orbit was added to the park. The total cost of the roller coaster was about $2 million. The track was roughly 335 meters long and traveled at a rate of 31 miles per hour. After a couple of decades, Peony Park was doing well. But like a roller coaster, Peony Park had its ups and downs. Unfortunately, no one knew the park was about to take its final plunge. In the late 1970s, after a change in management, the park suddenly started to lose money. In an attempt to bring in more revenue, the new management began poolside construction. On the north end of the pool, two water slides, known as the tubes, were installed. While these new attractions seemed promising at first, park attendance slowly declined. It was time to say goodbye to Omaha's most beloved amusement park. In 1993, due to the cost of maintenance and a low visitor turnout for the previous summer, Peony Park was put up for sale. This caused a major uproar within the city of Omaha. Many citizens had childhood memories of the park and did not want to see it shut down. Many groups, including the American Italian Heritage Society and the city of Omaha, tried to save the park in various ways, including public fundraising attempt to have the former amusement park turned into a public park. Despite these efforts, Peony Park still closed. An auction was held in 1994 to clear out most of the rides and attractions. A private contracting group called Cass Street Partnership ended up with the land, to the dismay of many citizens. Although the group offered the city of Omaha 8.5 acres of the park to create a public park that still stands today. Three and a half. Three and a half. 
We've been hired by Carl Jennings of Penny Park to sell his collection today. He's been collecting his entire life. He worked at the park since he was 14. And uh, his wife said it's time to let somebody else enjoy the items. So uh, everything's up for bid at public auction you see here today. Uh, we've got a Seabird V200 jukebox, which is one of the most popular items. The signage that we've got here are really popular with people that remember Penny Park. We've got signs from all over the park. Uh, the tickets, we have individual tickets, uh, rolls of tickets, those are, uh, have been real popular with people too. Uh, they remember, and then uh, obviously the uh, pinball machines, um, huge. And then we've got chairs and other memorabilia from around the park too, so. Currently, the area where Penny Park once stood is unrecognizable. In its place, there is a high V, a First National Bank, a gas station, and several other businesses. The only remains of the original park are Big Red's Kino and part of the gate that surrounded the park. Even though the area doesn't draw on a crowd the way it once did, Peeney Park will live on through the memories of those that experienced it. Omaha will always remember Peeney Park.